Hey guys, Melissa here. In this video, I'm going to show you my process of polishing my pieces, especially if they're all nicked up, which this one definitely is. If you joined me for last week's video, I made this pendant. I saved it for this week to polish it. So if you want to see my process, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. Alright, so this is what I start off with. I've had this polishing kit since I started 15 years ago or so. It comes with four different types of polishers. Way over to the left here we have coarse, then we have the black one which is a medium, we have fine, and then we have pink which is the polish, shines it up nicely. If I have minor scratches, the blue does well. If I have some major nicks, I use the black. I rarely use the white. So I pretty much, for the most part, if I'm easy with my pieces, it's just the blue and the pink. And also these 3M discs. This is the finest they have, and I use that to polish as well. This kit comes with one screw mandrel, just like that one, and one screw mandrel. Also, each color comes with three different types of tips. We've got the thick disc. We have the tapered disc. Then we have these screw on cylinders which i have here the threads are starting to poke out the top what i recommend if you happen to get a kit is to buy extra mandrels so you don't have to keep you know using one mandrel and replacing the tips i say that because i still haven't gotten extra screw tops and then i'll go back and forth and interchange the screw on ones and then they get loose and then i have to end up using tacky putty to keep this tip on all right, so tools you use these tips in. For many years, I've used just a cordless Dremel. I don't think you can get this anymore. I have a link to one down in my description, but it's not the same one. So on this one, I have a felt tip. I think that came with the Dremel, and I used some polishing compound on it as well. But it has a thicker shaft to it, which I have to, you know, change out the cullet on the Dremel. But recently, I acquired a flex shaft, which is this guy which I'm gonna use in this demonstration. This has a pedal on it, and you can control the speed through the pedal, which is really nice. Since this guy is old, it's really nice having the flex shaft now because it plugs into the wall. This guy is cordless, so the battery life didn't last very long. I can hardly get through one piece before it died, so it was getting kind of frustrating. So now I just have the felt tip on it in case I wanna use some polishing compound. So I'll put this aside. Yeah, my mom and I both make jewelry, so she's in love with her jewel tool. So she got a kind of like a, she got a flex shaft that plugs into that, and she gave me her old flex shaft, which I am completely delighted with. So. I also have this guy. This is another type of buffer polishing tool. I also acquired this from my mom. So it has this uh, the shorter cloth buffing wheel on this side, and this thicker pad on this side. I really can't say much about it. This thing I'll use occasionally, but it's an option as well. I just wanted to add, make sure you wear some safety goggles or a pair of glasses of some sort and a mask because there's so much debris that comes flying off. So make sure you do that. All right, so let's get started. What I do with my pieces, if it's really chewed up and nicked up in spots, I will come through and buff first and then I will oxidize and polish after that. This one I'm not gonna oxidize, so I'm just gonna go through all the buffing and polishing processes that I do. Okay, so this is the black polish tip, medium grit. I wanna get a thinner disc. And you'll find that the coarser grits disappear a lot quicker than the finer ones. I go over all the areas really lightly and I keep moving. You don't want to stay in one spot for too long because then you'll make a divot and you don't want that. So up in here is chewed up a bunch so let's go ahead and get those out right in here as well. So let's get that out.
And I use that grit as little as possible because it does take off a lot of metal. Got to be careful. And you got to be careful around your twisted wire too because it'll take those edges right off and then you can't tell it's twisted anymore. So I think the main part is up here that I'm worried about. a lot better so I'm gonna go ahead and switch it out next I'm gonna use my blue one the pointy one it's already ready to go you just gotta be careful I've got metal poking out the top of it so I gotta use the sides of it and if you notice I'm gonna go through all the square the square metal has little ridges in it and I like to get rid of that and shine it up Once again, I kind of avoid the twisted wire. making minor adjustments at this time too. switch the pink. Now you see it shine up a lot. see what the discs do. I like these guys. You get a bunch of them, you can stack them up three, four on top of each other and just make sure they go in the direction of the rotation. Another thing to mention is you want to avoid the stone as well. Don't use the polisher on it too much. If it's too soft, you might get some little buffing marks in it, so avoid it when you can. That. 
I'll show you how to use the Dremel. Go through some polishing options. Here's the white rouge, my Dremel. I'm just going to coat my felt with some polish. That's an option as well. Then to finish it off, because you're going to have all this black crud on it from polishing it, you're going to want to wash it and brush it off with a designated toothbrush and some mild soap, and that'll get all the crud off. And then you can polish it up with a polishing cloth. Or you can take it one step further. If you think your stone can take it, and your metal it won't get all tangled up. I do a lot of tumbling. I just have this cheap plastic tumbler. I think it's for kids, but it does me just fine. I throw that in there and I go up to the bathroom because that's where I can close the door and keep all the noise upstairs. When I fill the water up, just up to um, the jewelry itself. Yeah, just a little bit. A little dab of soap. Just a little dab. It'll polish it, wash it, burnish it. It's wonderful. Over here is the tumbler itself. Let's see, yeah, the original rock tumbler. I think I got this from Michael's. So I'm gonna put the lip on here on this little turning contraption. And once I plug it in, it's gonna start going. And then it gets loud and I have to close two doors and leave it upstairs. So uh, I keep it running for about an hour. So let me get this started. One hour later. all suds up on you. It doesn't look too dirty. That's because there's only one piece in there. If I had a bunch of things in here, the suds would look gray. Try not to dump any steel shot down the drain. Here we are. Let's go look at it under the other light. I'll dry it in some paper towel, and then I can go back with my polishing cloth and give it a final wipe down. And there we are, nice and shiny. I still see some, some little milling marks, I guess you'd say, on that wire, you know, the little ridges. I might go through with the polisher and uh, get that off. But for the video, I just kind of, I did it quick. So just so you know, I'm going to go back and do that again. All right, so that's the final product. I'm going to put it on my handmade chain. You could hook it at the end. Or you can hook it down lower. If I was thinking, I would have put a dangle on the end here, but I don't think I have any more of, the, of these blue uh, beads. And what I'll do is I'll put it on. I'll snap a picture of how it looks on me. I'll put that on Instagram. My Instagram link is down in the description, along with Facebook and TikTok or whatever else I'm on. Go follow me on those social media sites. I don't have many followers there, so it'd be nice to have you. So what do you think? So that's it for me. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.